This is Gaming Face Hello, Punch. peoples of the internet. I'm Keith from Gaming Face Punch, and this is our review of Independence Day Resurgence. It was shit. No, <laughs> I liked it. Don't 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 wail on it too much. <laughs> I thought that would be quite amusing. Um, no, this is our review of uh, Independence Day. So, what did you think, Gareth? I, I enjoyed it. I, I felt it was fun and stupid. And it wasn't the greatest film ever, but it wasn't the worst film ever. And I have seen many, many poorer films than this. I think the uh, the critics have, have dealt it a harsh blow. I don't think it is as bad as the critics made it out to be. It's, it's, it's far from the worst movie ever made. Um, it's no... What was that bloody film, with a, the, a, an alien invasion film, that, that something Sky, where they all die at the end? Sky... Uh, not Sky, or Skyline. Skyline. That was the worst fucking film ever made. Um, this was nowhere near that. I think what let this film down was the cast. I don't think the cast had heart. They didn't gel together. They didn't have the chemistry that the original cast from the original movie had. And 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 the death scenes of what pivotal characters wasn't given enough um, gravitas. Yes, that's the word. It wasn't given enough gravitas. Um, so when when major characters died, you didn't really feel that much for it. In fact, the only character, that, the only death scene in it that really gave you any emotion was uh, Brett Spiner's uh, boyfriend. That that was the most emotional death scene in the entire film. But that whole storyline was quite good. I quite like Brett Spiner. This he was probably one of the best things in the film. Yeah. Um, th- everything went bigger to the point that I could only afford one UFO this time. Yes. So it was like, oh, we've got one big UFO. It's uh, it's so big we can't afford any more. <laughs> Yes, there is one great line in it. It's going to touch down over the Atlantic. Where? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite a good line. I like that. And and uh, they like to get the landmarks. That's a good line. But they were all in the trailer. So, um, and it didn't... They seemed to put all the great one-liners in the trailer. And there was nothing else. There were no real surprises. And I, I said that when, when we did the uh, podcast and they released that four and a half minute trailer, I was a bit worried that they released a four and a half minute trailer. Because I was like, why do you need to show off more of the film if it's a good film? And then, and then like the whole press embargo over it as well. I don't think the studio had a lot of faith in it, and the opening weekend hasn't been great. But I say this, and spoilers, people, if you haven't seen this, go and see this before you listen to this. The third one, if they get to make it, I think will be a lot better. Yeah, there's a lot of potential in there, especially when they, uh, they got to the end. Um, things that bugged me was the fact that they had to put uh, a yellow school bus in there so you got a sense of perspective when you saw the alien queen at the end yes. because without that bus that there's, there's no, no sense of perspective at all the, the, you know I mean it, the final act the third act of the film was a bit subdued it wasn't Hughes dumb and Roland Emmerich like it was really. actually yeah saying that for Roland Emmerich it wasn't, it wasn't it was quite, yeah it was it was quite contained and and I think that didn't help the movie yeah, the final act of the the other film was massive great and it had that whole chemistry between Will Smith and uh, uh, what's his face Jeff Goldblum and that really really works even though it had the longest thirty seconds in Hollywood history um, it, you you forgave it um, whereas this film you didn't forgive it as much because the third act felt contained and and you know a bit unusual for a Hollywood film. I, wa- I went. I, wa- I was going to see a dumb popcorn flick. I wanted a great big fucking spectacle. And the other thing that I noticed, there wasn't as much destruction. And I mean, for fuck's sake, it's a Roman Emmerich film. He makes destruction porn, for God's sakes. Where was it? He, he he is the. How can I put it? He's the the better Michael Bay. I mean, the, I mean, the, the only real destruction you got was when they dropped the Petronas Towers and the, the tallest thing in Dubai building on London, which was just <laughs> totally out there. But. That was about the only destruction thing you got. And uh, uh, there was one scene in it that made me fucking piss myself laughing. When the big fuck off alien mothership lands and it's coming towards Washington and it just stops right at the gates of the White House and that little thing just falls over and hits the flag. I started laughing at that. I thought, yeah, okay, I get that. That was quite a good joke. That was quite a good joke. Um, But apart from that, um, yeah, look, uh, I thought it was okay. It was okay. I would I would say that if you're up for a dumb popcorn flick, you just want to forget about the world for two hours, um, go and watch this. But if you want to think more? Uh, wait until Suicide Squad. Because <laughs> I actually think that might be a really good film. Fingers crossed. Um, I've been Keith from Gaming Face Punch. Thanks for listening and watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.